Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is about growing your cool weather crops in a tower. This is a five tier tower from greenstockgarden.com and I'm actually giving this away. You can win this complete five tier tower and if you've been watching my video over the years you know that I've grown peppers in here, I grow herbs in here, I'm growing tomatoes in here. I'll show you a couple of the other towers I have. I have three of them. But right now this is something you can win. It's five tiers. You can choose the color that you want and you can also win with that the mover which is basically uh, six wheels it goes on the bottom of the container I took mine off because I don't need it and you would use that so that you could just turn your tower every couple of days depending on how your sun tracks. Here's one of the five tier towers I'm using to grow flowers to attract insects good insects to my bug hotel and I'm going to go over as we walk through the garden uh, four different ways you can grow cool weather crops in your garden. And this is the other way that I'm using the five tier tower. You can also go to their site and use the coupon, the Rusted Garden, and you'll get a discount on different products of the tier towers. So these are tomatoes. It's uh, later September, so a lot of them have died back. But in the bottom, I planted indeterminate cherry type tomatoes. You can see that they're still doing really well. And up top, I had determinate variety tomatoes. I actually had Tiny Tim. But this tower was really successful, a little bit too successful. So I'm going to plant less of the indeterminate varieties, but you can grow tomatoes in these towers. When you're growing them in containers, you want to make sure that your mix, and I have plenty of videos on that, is at least 50% peat moss and then it can be really anything else. If you have got compost, that would be great. Mixed in here, I use worm castings, I use organic fertilizer, and you're basically really creating a potting mix, a container mix that's going to hold water, and that's the whole key to growing successfully in these type now, of towers. A lot of times when you're growing these cool weather crops, you have the moths that come in, they lay eggs on here, they chew them down and destroy them. And because they're leafy greens, I like to come in here, when they get a little bit bigger, and just pick off the leaves and put them in salad. I don't want to use dusts or sprays, even though I use organic sprays. I like to put agricultural fabric right over this. Now there's a key to that. If you buy garden fabric, garden insect, insect fabric, it's, it's different names, and it's not UV protected, or it doesn't have a UV protection in it, you're wasting your money. Let me show you what I mean by that and go show you some of the fabric. This is the agricultural fabric, the garden fabric, the insect, insect fabric that I use. The sun will go through it. This is all UV protected. And basically, the sunlight will strike this harshly for the growing season. And the ultraviolet rays, UV, the ultraviolet rays, will break down and destroy the fabric you're using if it doesn't have UV protection. This is um, bought off of... Amazon. I don't remember the brand, but it's not important so much the brand that it has UV protection. I'll show you how I set this up on the container at the end. We'll also walk through the garden. I'll show you all the fall, fall cool weather crops I'm growing and how I'm using this fabric. This really eliminates the need for insect dusts and sprays, but I will go over how you have to use them when you first put this down because there's going to be eggs on the leaves of your plants. This took me a while to figure out. It was laying in my back of my garden. This is fabric used for protecting your plants in the spring from frost or protecting them from frost in the later fall. Same type of idea. It's a little bit thicker, but it's not UV protected. And within 60 days, I would just left it laying out there because sometimes I get a little bit lazy. It completely broke down and is a waste. A waste of money. Same thing will happen with your garden fabric for protecting your plants from insects. It must have the UV protection. Don't go cheap. Spend a little bit more money for something that clearly states it's got UV protection. Alright, let me show you my other cool weather crops. So I'm growing the cool weather crops in four different ways and I'll show you how I do that as we walk through the garden. These are containers. The bottoms are not cut out. They're about 20 gallon containers. I have broccoli, cauliflower, kale, all your basic cool weather crops in there. These are not getting covered in fabric. I do have to dust them regularly. And these are the sturdier, thicker leaves. Because they're thicker leaves, I don't mind using the sprays and dust because they wash very nicely. So there's not a lot of chew holes in there. But as soon as you see signs like that on the leaves, that's probably because you've got caterpillars on there, most likely the green cabbage looper. So these are just growing in containers. 
What I'm using on here, in case you don't want to buy the garden insect fabric, I'm spraying neem oil on the outer side of the leaves, underside of the leaves. I sell that at my seed shop. And that kills off chewing insects. I do it about every 7 to 14 days. Every 7 days if it rains a lot and there's a problem, every 10 to 14 days if I'm just maintaining it. And I don't mind using that, it's organic, and I like using that on the heavier leaves that stay I exposed. Water them, uh, regularly, of course, but I put in the water-soluble fertilizer every seven to 10 days. That moth that's flying around is what lays the eggs on your leafy greens. So water-soluble fertilizer every seven to 10 days will keep them happy. If you come over here, you can see that I set up a tent. And this is the garden fabric. There's a moth right inside there. They do get inside. Pinned along here. And there's a chance that that is, has laid eggs on here. So when you set this up, every once in a while, you got to drop dust down. That's what I did last night. When you flip this over, you can see those holes. The fabric greatly reduces the chance of those white moths and other moths getting in there and laying eggs on there, but it can happen. So you have to kind of maintain this. When you get the fabric down, put your sprays on it, put your dust on it, and you want to do that for a good seven days because what you're trying to do is kill off the life cycle of the hatching eggs underneath. Once that happens, you can stop the sprays and the dusts. You just want to make sure that you're keeping it closed tightly along here so they don't come in. And over here, I believe this might be broccoli. Over on this side, I have cauliflower. And I think this one's faring a little bit better. There's less holes in there. Same principle. And I like this way. Uh, I like to set it up this way with a three foot post here because these are gonna grow about three feet tall and I don't have to keep moving them around. So we're gonna come into here I've got arugula, lettuces, kohlrabi, different kales in there, and I'm going to drop in a net that goes over this, a garden fabric that goes over this. For this to work, I drop in pieces of bamboo pole just so that the net, the netting stays up over it and I will change that out as I need to. But as these plants get stronger, they will naturally lift up the fabric. And you're going to protect, again, using the fabric, reduce, you're gonna protect them from the moths, and you're gonna reduce the amount of chemicals, even if they're organic, that you have to use on your plants. And then we have another setup right over there. Let me put the fabric down on there and show you how I do so that. So down here, I put down the garden insect fabric. Right in here are lettuces and arugula. I don't like putting the neem oil on that because it's hard to wash and the leaves are kind of fragile. When you're using new oils and new sprays, always test spray. What I found is neem oil works just about on everything. Sometimes it can damage the more fragile leaves. You would just use less oil in that case. I did put some dust on there, but it doesn't really wash off. We're gonna go over to my potting table. I'm gonna show you how I'm growing these in a flower boxes and they do much better. Dropped Captain Jack's dead bug dust spray on there and then just put the cover back on. It's stapled, I have a video on that, I will link it. Just stapled to a six or eight foot post. Stapled on both sides to the post and that will weight it down so that the wind doesn't blow it up. On the outer side, I have more room so that the fabric can come up, but I just use a clothes pin, pin it down, you could drop something on there if you want to keep the fabric to the ground. But this is a great way to reduce your use of chemicals and protect your cool weather crops. And this is a second way to plant them, of course. You can just put them right into the earth beds, you know, into your raised beds. Here's an example of a smaller one. If you are, you know, not growing a whole lot, you can do the same thing with these four by four, uh, four foot deck posts. And you just put them on all four sides. That'll weigh it down. And I'm using these with Brussels sprouts. Here's the dust. And because I left this off for a couple of days, you just sprinkle your insect dust on there. That will take care of any problems. And then you just drop this over. These are Brussels sprouts. They're gonna be strong enough to lift the fabric up. As, and since you're planting in the fall, 
if a frost comes, these cool weather crops can take a frost, they can take a freeze on the leaves, but that's going to kill off the moths. And once you get that frost, kills off the butterflies, kills off the moths, you can really remove this and just let your plants grow. All right, let's go over to the peas, and I'll just show you how I use pieces of fabric for grasshoppers. You know, if you don't want to make something like I just showed you, you can just cut the garden fabric to size. If you look in here, you can see all the chew holes. Those were from loopers. I've taken care of those. This has been sprayed with neem oil. No need to put the dust on there. Just cut the fabric, drop it in, and then you can put some posts or stakes or sticks along the side and that will give it some protection. For my peas, I'm just cutting pieces of fabric, wrapping it around like that, and that's because I had uh, grasshoppers, which I never had before. I couldn't figure it out for a while, but they were jumping in there, eating all the leaves off and killing them, and that's one way to use the fabric. Okay, let's go over to the tower, drop the fabric on there. So this is one piece of fabric cut 12 feet long. It's about four feet wide. You can buy it however you like. And I just draped it from the left, about six feet on that side, across the top, six feet down that side. And where it is the gap, you just use your clothespins to pin it. And this will keep those insects off of there. And it's a nice way to grow stuff that you can just come out here, pick it, you don't even have to wash it because you're not gonna have any chemicals on there. And this is how you would harvest it. You would just open up the side, pull it open, do what you need to do, and then you close it back up and use the clothespins. And this would be the third way that you can, draw, you can grow your cool weather crops in the fall or spring in a five-tier tower. Remember, go to the description. You can enter the contest to win this. And this is a space saver. And you would just rotate this. If you didn't have, again, a lot of light, maybe, like I get full sun from over here, it goes all the way around and you can just see all the sun coming late in the afternoon. But you would just put it on this mover and you would just spin it every couple of days so that the container rotates through where you get the main light. Okay, so the third way. Let's go over to here and I'll show you the fourth way you can grow cool weather crops. So here is the fourth way. Just did a short video on showing you the growth of this space and, and linked the video of how I planted it. But you can just grow in flower boxes and small containers. We have the kale, beets, arugula. The arugula is much more healthy. When you grow in these containers, one of the benefits is it's off the ground. So you don't get a lot of the insects that might come in and cause problems. Radishes, you can grow full-size radishes in containers. And this just takes up a little bit of space. And that's, you know, enough for several salads. I have another wave going. Spinach, arugula, lettuce, all in here. And again, just simple flower boxes. This is a potting mix, at least 50% peat moss. And you would water the green stalk, five-tier tower, your flower boxes, the containers I showed you in the beginning, every 10 to 14 days with a water-soluble fertilizer. Plants that are put in the ground don't need as much fertilizer. And I'm growing spinach and lettuce in there. And I'll actually be filling this up with water and leaving a water reservoir in there. But that's for a future video if you want to subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. It gives you an idea of four ways that you can grow the cool weather crops in the fall, in the spring. And if you'd like to enter to win the five-tier tower, just click the link below. Thanks so much for watching.